Ryan here with Dark Rangers Inc. And today we're gonna switch gears a little bit and make this one all about you guys. Because of your support, the channel just hit a thousand subscribers, something that I didn't anticipate happening until years from now. And I put a huge stretch goal out of December 31st. I certainly didn't think I'd be putting out an episode like this in the beginning half of September, but here we are and it's all because of you guys. Over the last four months, I've really tried to perfect a style of efficiency, packing as much information into as short a time period as possible. And the only downside with that is it's not very personable. And so for that reason, for those of you guys that are real fans of the channel, hopefully you'll bear with me as I slow it down a little bit and take some time to personally thank you guys in a genuine and sincere way. And the best way I thought to do that would be to feature some of your work that you've done and maybe even improve just a little bit as a result of this channel. Because after all, that's the sole purpose of Dark Rangers Inc. To help people better their astrophotography images, whether by inspiring you guys to get out to a dark sky site, helping you decide the next purchase to make on your gear, or keeping you up to date with the latest processing techniques. And the best part about all of that is it forces me to be better because I'm constantly having to stay up to date and practice and through trial and error, better myself so that I can give you guys the best stuff that I can come up with. A lot of these tools have been out for days or weeks and so nobody's really an expert on them yet. And so it's a lot of fun for me to sit down and experiment and try to work out what I think is the best way to use them. Now, of course, I'm not always right and I learn from you guys a lot and so it's always a great two-way community and I'm very appreciative of that. I also get the opportunity to talk to other experts in the astrophotography field and share their knowledge with you as well. And so with all that being said guys thank you so much for a thousand subscribers. I do it for you guys. It means a lot. I want to give a special thank you to my Dark Ranger Patreon community. Um, because of your support we're almost at a break even on the monthly cost of producing this channel so that's awesome and it really means a lot that you guys would go above and beyond for me like that and I enjoy seeing your artwork and your images come in on almost a daily basis at this point on our Dark Rangers Facebook group and to everybody else that just comments likes and keeps coming back and watching the content and giving me the awesome feedback and even ideas for future videos it goes a long way. I have partnered with Agena Astro with their affiliate program as well as RC Astro. So if you are looking to support the channel in a way that costs you absolutely nothing, using the links in the description and comments really does go a long way. And I know it's an extra step, but I really appreciate that. If you're watching and you haven't subscribed, I'd really encourage you to. I try not to verbally mention this often. I know I have a little banner across the bottom, but it really does mean a lot when the only real reason you're doing something is to help people out, for them to show you that your content does matter to them enough to subscribe and keep coming back. Today's episode is gonna be all about you guys and I'm really excited to share some of your work. Some of you don't even know that I am, so I'd invite you to stay tuned because you never know one of your images could show up on the screen. And so without any further delay, Let's jump into some of the great work that you guys are creating and hopefully improving as a result of being a part of the Dark Rangers community. All right, we're back to standing because we are going to dive into these photos and I am super excited. With some of them, I have more information than others. I tried to share what you guys gave me. I was getting photos from all different angles, social media, text, email, etc. So if you want to add some additional info and your photo was shared in this, please use the comment section. And so with that, we'll dive right in. The first one I'm going to go over is our August Dark Ranger Inc. Community Member Photo of the Month. And it goes to Eric, a.k.a. Astro J, for his rendition of the Pickering's Triangle. Now, he did a nice job using two different filters, one for the nebulosity and then one for the stars, and there's great color, contrast, and composition. As you look at it from left to right, all that great detail kind of brings you back into the photo. And what I like about this and a lot of the other images is these were all done on rigs that are fairly attainable to most of us. Like nobody was using anything outrageous. And I think for most part that a lot of these were shot under pretty normal conditions, if not even more on the challenging side, like we'll talk about in a little bit. So if you put in the time dedication and a lot of the things that we've talked about on this channel, you too can get great results like you're going to see here. He also did a uh, Comet Nishimura uh, in the wee morning hours when it kind of first was coming out as a public thing. And I did feature this on the Comet video. So if you haven't seen that video, check it out. 
um, but I wanted to kind of highlight that as well. Now, the next one is from our very first community member and somebody who has been featured on the show a couple times, Dan, a.k.a. Dan Dan Spaceman. Now, if you don't remember, Dan is living in a Bortle 8 New York City right on the ocean, so he actually wakes up with a residue of salt over his mainland, so the worst possible conditions for the most part. And he's only about four months into the hobby, so this is his first SHO narrowband image. And he and I do work one-on-one -on -one quite a bit in order to process this quickly you are going to need some help and he does an awesome job actually acquiring the data given his situation but we just had to work through some of the processing kinks as most of you know you run into when you switch from one shot color to narrowband but this is something I'd be proud at four years into the hobby much less four months especially given the fact that he's in such light polluted skies. So Dan, keep it up. He used a very similar setup to me with the 2600mm Pro, three nanometer Antlia filters, a lot of the ZWO stuff, and then shot at just under 400 millimeters. Another Dark Ranger community member photo set is from Greg Ferguson. Now he is using both a mirrorless camera with Ro Afuki, the Sony A1, which is a very high end, nice mirrorless camera, as well as the 2600 MC Pro with the Helix Nebula both shot on the Red Cat 71. So considering the fact that the Helix was shot at only 350 millimeters, the detail and color he was able to get was actually really nice. And I really do like his processing of that. Um, it shows and highlights the different colors that are in that nebula without overdoing it. And did a really nice job with the star field here in Roifuki as well as some of the dark dust lanes. So Greg, great job. He's also newer to the hobby and he's got some gear coming. We got him the same monochrome filters and color camera that Dan has. And then he added a lot of focal length with 190 millimeter Mac Newt uh, at about a thousand millimeters of focal length. So plenty of challenges coming for him and he is somebody that I do kind of work one-on-one -on -one with and I'm excited to help him get some of those first narrowband images out. All right, we couldn't have a show thanking the people that watch this channel without talking about Simon, aka C. If you've looked in the comment section, you have undoubtedly seen this name and he's so humble that he didn't even want to send me photos because he didn't think they were up to par and he's using a very simple PHQ 65 with a Star Adventure GTI mount, something you could literally throw in your backpack and go on a hike with to create some pretty cool stuff. Um, this is Etta Carena. For those of you in the North Hemisphere, if you don't recognize it, that's for good reason. We can't see it up here. And he showed kind of a little bit of a before and after, working on his false Hubble palette, getting into Photoshop a little bit, using my tutorial on that, and trying to get a little bit more contrast and pop out of it, and then also neutralize the background a little bit better and work on some of those things but he's looking to do some upgrades here in the near future but in the meantime what he's been able to get with a really nice small portable rig is actually phenomenal so simon keep it up and appreciate all the love both on uh, youtube and facebook and the other platforms so thanks buddy all right if i could sum up the purpose of this channel in one slide this would be it will took the andromeda one shot color guide and ran with it he's actually requested i do the same thing for nebula i tried to make it a one shot color guide in general but i could see that yes since we did use a galaxy it made sense and we'll see one other example of somebody applying it to a galaxy and he didn't leave the really nice note that this is evidence that your guide is incredible for processing galaxies i have never been able to produce a decent galaxy and while i I appreciate the compliment. I'm going to have to argue with you because I do think that this first result is actually pretty solid. You just took it to another level. And this one is phenomenal. It looks just like the version that I left off with in PixInsight in the guide before I took it into Photoshop. So that was basically like my natural look and Will just completely nailed it here. So guys, night and day improvement, really solid job. And he actually sent a couple more images that I wanted to highlight here of the Seder region with the Crescent, bringing in that normalization process to do the false Hubble palette similar to C, and then the Spaghetti Nebula as well. Now he's also a Sony mirrorless user and also owns a Red Cat. So I don't know if there's something going on with that combination. And I did want to mention that both mirrorless cameras in these photos were Astro modded. So between Greg and will so if you have any questions leave those and guys if you could let them know how you did that that would be great um the next person up actually has a huge instagram following his name is la aka adastro to the stars and 
If you need a sales pitch for integration time, I think I do like to talk about it a lot, although in a lot of my videos recently, I have been doing one night shoots, which are a challenge for me. I never go this far, 94 hours here on the after photo. And the first one I actually really like, it's IC63 and the Pac-Man. I've done both of them individually at about 450 millimeters. And I thought to myself, I wish I had way more focal length, especially for the Pac-Man. But LA was able to do this at 180 millimeters, so super wide with a ton of integration time and basically tie these two images together by using all the faint dust and nebulosity that's out there if you stack up a ton of data. So he used the L Ultimate filter and so really that one shot color narrow band look. And I actually really do like the coloring in the before image here on the Pac-Man, but all of this faint detail in the after is just uh, pretty mind blowing. So. Awesome job and look forward to more stuff coming from you. Check out his Instagram. He's got a ton of great stuff. Another great before and after example of Andromeda, our most comic book name you've ever heard, Caden Bain. And this is a great example of adding a little bit more integration time, improving not only your processing, but also your data acquisition. Because you can see he went from something that was, in all fairness, pretty noisy and something that I know he wasn't very happy with to something that's super clean. And this is with a really, you know, the SV Boney stuff in terms of value per dollar is always really good. If you're you're looking for stuff that you can get the most bang for your buck this and one other scope that we're going to talk about in a second are great options um, using just a uv ir cut filter and then obviously the andromeda one shot processing guide so Caden, great work keep it up keep sending me stuff and then that other scope I was talking about was the EvoStar 80 ED doublet. And paired with a dual narrowband filter, it actually does do a great job with one-shot color. Typically, doublets are known to not be the best with color. But uh, Matt, aka Matthias underscore ACQ on Instagram, somebody that I do chat with regularly, with a very nice, simple setup, getting two clean well done images. I really like the way he does color because they are punchy, they're good for social media, but he doesn't overdo it, right? You wouldn't call them subtle, but they're not overdone. They're just like that right amount of punch that even people that maybe aren't into astrophotography can really appreciate it and, and be kind of blown away. So great job. And for both with only being about four hours of acquisition time, very solid. And like Dan, Matt is also from New York, although he's not in the city. So not not as bad of conditions, but still not the best and able to get some really good results. So nice job, Matt. All right. And the final person I'm going to talk about is Charlie. And he has a new YouTube astrophotography channel as well called Astro Candy TV. He's just got his first couple of videos up. He's definitely taking a different approach to making content for the hobby. So check it out. And I like his use of the traditional SHO uh, Hubble palette using monochrome with SHO filters. And he did a really nice job not oversaturating and giving that nice natural look. I did a similar look on SH2 115 and 116. Uh, and I really do like that look. And that's something that we both kind of been working on, but he wanted to showcase all three gases without really adding a lot of saturation and really letting the data do the talking. So Guys, that's it for this one. I couldn't think of a better way to say thank you other than to just verbally do it and showcase all of your hard work. If I have been helpful in even 1% of any of these images, that's a big honor and I'm happy to be a part of your journey and your progress. Guys, thank you so much for being a part of the channel. We do have some big things coming up. I can't even share all of them yet. Some of them aren't final, but you are gonna wanna stay tuned. We are just getting warmed up with a thousand subscribers and I can't wait to join you guys all as the channel continues to grow. Thank you so much and until the next one, clear skies.